say San, you say Diego. San. Diego. <laughs> All right, we're gonna do a little weekend road trip to San Diego. Woo! We've been trying to do more and more road trips, but it's been kind of hectic with the move and everything, but we're finally settled down, so hopefully more adventures coming up. We have made it to San Diego. It's super clean, it's super beautiful, and there's still a whole lot going on here. So, I don't know. Don't be surprised if one day we're like, we're moving to San Diego. <laughs> this lens has been amazing so far, by the way, and pretty much anything you point this thing at, it looks really, really good. I'm gonna be slapping this lens on here and also using this ND filter just to get this aperture nice, wide, and open. You have no idea what we're about to do today. You're gonna be so happy. It's a great trip while it lasted. <laughs> kind of hard to see, but we got totally nailed. Luckily I got these steel bumpers on here, but there's a few cracks along here. This thing popped off. The whole tire got kind of pressed in. That's the downside of driving around Los Angeles is even if you're a really good driver, even if you're just stopped waiting for a light to turn green, I've been rear-ended four times in Los Angeles just while I was at a stop. But luckily I got steel all around, so I'm good. The other cars, not so much. Anyways, shit happens, but you know, no one was hurt, so that's the important part. And I've been in accidents where people were hurt, and trust me, if you get in an accident and no one's like rushed to the hospital, that's a good thing. What freaked us out the most was definitely the dogs being in the back, but they're fine. Huh, Mozzarella? Come here. What'd you think of your first accident? You're freaked out, huh? Anyways, back to the topic. Why you guys are here, this 85 millimeter f1.8. Basically, 95% of that footage was shot with this lens on this EOS R. Every time I throw it on, I'm like, man, I should use this lens a whole lot more. What's interesting about this lens is it's been around forever. I believe this first was announced in 1992. I was three years old, oh my God. But the thing that's cool is that even though it's almost 30 years old, it still hangs in here. Being as old as it is, it doesn't really have any of the fancy like nano USM technology or anything like that, but it's a damn sharp lens and it works. It's also 369 bucks. Canon also makes an 85 mil millimeter f1.2 which i'm sure is an awesome lens but it's close to two thousand dollars i've never shot with that 85 but i do have the 50 millimeter f1.2 it's so shallow that i'm like very cautious of using it i rarely dip down to that 1.2 and since this is an 85 i imagine that 85 1.2 would be pretty difficult to use i bet it looks awesome but you're probably not going to use it all the time just like i don't like using the f1.2 on this all the time because so many shots could come out looking looking blurry because so little is in focus that a majority of the shots just like, whoa, too much. 85 is in that perfect kind of tight range where it's not too close, but it's not too wide. It's definitely a close up range. It definitely works well in a close up, but it also works really well even if you're really far back. You want to get a full person in the shot, but still want that background blurry. This is a great lens for that. And I think that f1.8 is kind of that sweet spot for the 85. It's one of the very few lenses under like 400 bucks where I look at it and go, wow that looks sharp. And it's definitely a super sharp lens. There's a lot of lenses where you open them wide open and it just doesn't look that good. But this lens, no issues with that. It's super sharp and crispy. But whenever I put on a type prime lens, it kind of forces me to get a little bit creative with shots because not only are you forced to shoot in type, but also everything just looks like magically cool. Just getting shots of food or coffee in the cafe, like everything just looks so nice. Everything looked like a commercial. A waiter at the restaurant like looked over my shoulder 
shoulder and saw what I was shooting and was like, holy crap, you should shoot our commercial. Why does that look so good? And really the big secret is this 85 millimeter 1.8. And of course it being an F1.8, you're gonna get some pretty good low light performance. Paired with the EOS R, I was definitely able to see in places where it looked a lot brighter on the camera than it did to my eyes. And whenever I have a tight angle lens, kind of like this 85, I love just throwing in some foreground elements, just nice and super blurry in the foreground. You can literally throw anything in front of the camera. And if you have this lens on there, it's gonna look really, really cool. But again, it being such an inexpensive old lens, there's gonna be a few downsides to it. One, I don't believe it's weather sealed, at least not nearly as much as like an L series lens like this. So I would refrain from taking it out into the snow, rain, dust, also no image stabilization. But it being at an 85, every little movement shake that you do up here in the lens, it's gonna be amplified since this lens is in so tight. So you're definitely gonna want some sort of stabilization in your camera. I was just using the digital stabilization in the EOS R, not the enhanced. Enhanced, everything looks like warpy, like whoa. But on enabled, it definitely helped kind of smoothen things out because I didn't have a stabilizer or anything. So I was just kind of holding it like that. If you have a camera with like IBIS, that'd be pretty cool. And I'm definitely hoping that Canon releases a camera soon that has like a mechanical IBIS. That would be awesome because it'd become easier to use a whole lot of these lenses. But for now, the digital image stabilization worked. Now in terms of autofocus, I would say it's really good, just not perfect. You know, with the EOS R, I didn't have any major complaints with it. It was relatively quick to pick everything up with face detection and all that. It's not as fast as some of these modern crazy fast lenses, but it was fast enough and accurate enough for me to be able to use it pretty comfortably with dual pixel autofocus. The other downside would also be the amount of noise this lens makes. So listen to this. You hear that? It's definitely not the noisiest lens I've ever heard, but you could definitely hear, it, especially if you're using the audio from the internal camera or probably even if you have an onboard microphone. I don't think it's loud enough to where it'll ruin all the audio you try to record out of here, but it's definitely audible. Me personally, if I was using a microphone on the camera, I would definitely stick to like a 16 to 35 millimeter lens so I could be up close to the subject. Anything past 50 and that subject is gonna be further away and the audio is not gonna sound that great from the onboard anyways. Another slight downside of this is that it is not the best macro lens. Let me throw this on here real quick and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Whoa, this is super tight and close. I should have fixed my hair. Should put on a little bit of makeup, a little bit of powder, a little bit of foundation, a little bit of blush, lipstick. Like you can see my eyes are in focus, but like even just here, my ear is out of focus. So that's pretty cool. See, that's as close as I can get. I can get up to here but you can't get any closer without some sort of macro ring thing that you put behind your lens. So this is as close in as you're gonna wanna get. Just to give you guys something to compare it to, this is what a macro lens looks like. Boom, and now here we are on the macro lens. Notice I can get in a lot closer and I could actually just keep going. My goodness. Look at that detail. I could just keep going for eternity. This is the 100 millimeter 2.8 L series. I think it's right around 800 bucks. So more than double, but awesome lens. Check out this thumbnail. That's pretty dope, huh? Yeah. Anyways, let's wrap this up, but kind of slowly because I'm still at that nine minute mark. So I got to draw this out a little bit longer. <laughs> I got to say, this is probably my favorite lens under 400 bucks. Not useful for everything. Cause again, it is a tight angle lens. You try to vlog with this thing. You're going to look like an idiot. It'll be out of focus and it's going to be like a close-up of your eye but trying to get some slick cinematic shots get that super shallow depth of field get creative this is a good one also in my last video i asked you guys what color backdrop i should get for that third row up there you guys voted on purple all right i'm gonna go out this week and get myself a purple one that should actually look pretty cool i'm pretty excited about that anyways let's read some of the comments from my last video which was the canon eos rp and what a disappointment that was if you guys missed that one the eos rp is a 1300 full frame canon camera but it does not have 24 frames per second in hd it has 24 frames per second in 4k but no dual pixel autofocus so it's kind of a iffy camera to try to use armando says that's it i'm switching to sony <laughs> 
dude. There's so many people that probably switched to Sony after they realized what Canon was doing with this RP. Medi Hapoya says, oh man, when I found this out, so brutal. The very reason Canon got so big with video is 24 frames per second and they took that away. It's so weird. 1080p 24 was something that was just established like so long ago as like a standard that it's just so weird that they're going back and pulling that feature out. Again, not everyone shoots in 24. A lot of people like to shoot in 30. It's just like such a basic thing that they pulled out of the camera. I have a friend who's getting one, so I will still be playing with it and trying to review it when it comes in. But man, I really hope Canon just releases that firmware update for it. Canon is always very innovative on how to cripple a camera. <laughs> yeah, I don't think any of us saw it coming. A majority of us were so excited about the camera until we realized that just that little feature that all filmmakers that want to have cinematic footage, you know, that little feature, just Canon M50 with speed booster versus EOS RP. I was originally gonna get the EOS RP to be my overhead camera, but as soon as I realized it doesn't have 24 frames per second in HD, I was like, nope, cancel order, get another Canon M50. At least it has 1080p 24 frames per second, which is not something I ever thought I would have to say about a thousand plus dollar camera. <laughs> I also decided to get white because I used to have a black one, which was given away. Got a randomized comment selected. So congrats to Carlos out in Idaho for winning the Canon M50 and Speed Booster that's coming your way. Don't worry if you didn't win this one because many more coming. I'm trying to become like the lamer version of Oprah. You get one, you get one. Anyways, I'm past 10 minutes, so I am out. See ya.